you ever been to a school and you came across a cadre and you thought to yourself like, man, if I ever meet this guy out in the street, I'm gonna beat his ass just because of how he treated you while you were in that course. I know I have a couple of guys that I feel that way about. So if you see me in the streets, you best watch out because I'm retired now. Guys, in today's episode, we're going to talk about five type of cadre that you will see as you attend selection in the qualification course trying to become a Green Beret. I always preach that there's similar personality across all of the soft units. This isn't just for special forces. You're going to meet these same type of personalities across the DOD, whether it's Marine Corps, whether it's Navy, whether it's Air Force, these same guys will pop up when you least expect it. Number five guys, as far as the type of cadres that you're going to meet in special forces is the PT stud. Not a PT stud, he's gonna do whatever he can to show you how physically fit he is. He's gonna show up in the morning and he's gonna take you and your class on a 12 mile run just cause he knows he could run 12 miles at a sub six minute pace. He's gonna smoke you, he's gonna make you do endless push-ups. He's going to make you go in rucks, knowing that you're not going to get anything out of it, but a broken down body, which will affect your ability to perform in the next phase. It is what it is, guys. Those guys are uh, fit and more often than none, they have nothing else to offer you, but they want you to see them as a physically fit specimen. And they're hoping that that alone will get you to respect them. I remember when I was going through the 18 Charlie course, we had this fucking instructor, man. He was a runner. He was like this big and his whole thing was running. We would show up in the morning and he would take us on these long ass fucking runs, break us off and we're sitting in the classroom and everybody's just sore as shit, unable to focus on the curriculum because we were hurting. If you have one of those, I feel sorry for you. I hope you're in shape because there's no other way to overcome that guy. You just gotta do what he tells you to do and hopes that some of the other cadres will step in once they realize that, hey, these guys aren't retaining the information because they're being broken off and they can't focus on what they actually need to learn. Um, and then hopefully they'll get him to back off of you. Guys, number four as far as the type of cadres that you're gonna meet throughout your special forces journey is the clown. Now this guy's always joking around. He's always pranking you. He is sometimes borderline unprofessional and he oftentimes looks like a bag of dicks. He does all this because he wants to be liked by the students. He wants to be seen as a cool, you know, cadre. He wants to be that guy that all the students will leave the uh, schoolhouse, you know, talking about. You know, he's trying to build that reputation. What he doesn't realize is oftentimes it's counterproductive because the students just see him as a clown that is very unprofessional and that nobody wants to be like. Number three, guys, as far as the type of cadre that you're going to come across while in Special Forces is going to be the professional. Now, this guy knows the standards and he upholds the standard. He doesn't joke around. He doesn't pick on students. He's firm, but fair. He looks the part and he wants to motivate, educate and coach students. He wants to share his experiences to make the students better. The students respect them and they one day hope to be like that professional cadre. I like to think while I was an instructor in the 18 Charlie Committee, that's the type of cadre that I was. If you were one of my students, let me know in the comment section below. I'm curious to know. Number two is the cadre with little men syndrome. We all know one of those dudes. That's the guy that went all through, you know, middle school, high school being picked on, was never in a position of power. He joined the military, he somehow got to special forces, and now he's in the position of power. And he displays that power by essentially bullying students, picking on them, making fun of them, making them do stuff that they shouldn't have to do just because he wants to feel important. Those guys are horrible and they're dangerous to have as cadres, but we all know one of those dudes. Let's move to number one, guys. And number one is gonna be similar to number two. He is gonna be your tab protector. Now, this guy believes that only certain people should have that tab. And if he doesn't like you, he's gonna do whatever he can to make sure that you don't get that tab or that beret. You can meet or achieve the standards. He doesn't care. He operates in the gray and he's gonna do whatever he can to make sure that he fails you. I had dealing with those guys when I was going through the uh, qualification course. Luckily for me, I had other cadres that stood up to that guy and knew what right looked like 
and they challenge him to make sure that everything was done accordingly. If you come across one of those dudes or any of the other cadres, the best thing you can do is to find somebody that's professional, that's fair and firm, and just have a conversation with them. Even though you're a student, you're still able to use your open door policy and speak to any one of the cadres or anyone within that command to bring up your concerns. Guys, I appreciate you guys watching. If I miss any of the type of cadres out there, leave it in the comment section below. Again, the intent behind this is to prepare you to deal with different type of personalities while you're going through the Q course. I appreciate you guys watching and I'll see you guys in the next one.